Welcome back. So you might be wanting to get into Linux or you've been a long time enthusiast of Linux desktops and you know of the big distributions out there. Fedora, Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Debian, Arch, Manjaro, and so forth and so on. But what I love about the Linux community and also is one of the biggest boons of the Linux community is the fact that derivatives of these exist. The community gets their hands on these major Linux projects and turns them into their own versions, respins, distros, whatever you want to call them. Now, the fun thing is about a lot of these projects is that they introduce a more curated experience of the major Linux projects. So in today's video, what I want to try and do is offer you, the viewer, some suggestions of curated community driven distributions that you might want to check out as an alternative to the big mainstream players in the desktop Linux space. So a few disclaimers, first of all, this list is not exhaustive. I'm just going to give you a couple of highlights that I've enjoyed over my time poking around in the Linux desktop. And secondly, these distros are all geared towards everyday desktop usage. So they're not really for fringe cases like uh, network penetration testing or anything like that. They're squarely aimed at everyday standard desktop usage. I've tried also to steer away from ones that have a either a commercial backing or a large donation user base. Um, what I mean by that is I'm trying to steer away from distributions that have already really solid funding and a solid development cycle of their own. I'll give you a great example once we get rolling here. And by the way, do me a favor and subscribe and turn your notifications on. It's, uh, it's been a while since I've asked anyone to do that. But let's have a look at what are some of the best community distributions based on the big name Linux distros. Okay, so. There's a bunch here that I want to get to, uh, but let's deal with Ubuntu first. Ubuntu is a mammoth project and there are many, many, many distributions based off it, but I'm going to give you just a handful, a smattering of community driven distributions that, uh, that are just members of the community, however many they may be, who have decided to craft their own experience. Now, back in the day, I would have given Linux Mint just the automatic crown of best Ubuntu based community distribution. But the thing is Linux Mint is so much its own project now that I kind of want to just leave it off to the side and acknowledge it as one of the biggest players in the mainstream Linux desktop space. So we can open up the door for a few lesser known distributions like Voyager OS, Voyager, Ubuntu, uh, they're, they're, it has a few different versions. First of all, it does have a version based on Ubuntu uh, 22.04, and it also has a Debian edition. Now I've looked at both of these versions over my time, and I did a video years back on Voyager as it appeared back then. But what's promising about it is the fact that it has stuck around. Many a distribution have come and gone over the last 10 years, but Voyager as a curated Ubuntu experience built off X FCE, but also GNOME is a really cool alternative vision of what Ubuntu as a distribution could look like. And the fact that they have an addition here, uh, they, they did have in the past an addition specified for gamers, but it definitely focuses on a user-friendly experience, probably a little bit more Mac-ish, but not entirely, built mainly off XFCE, but with a little bit of GNOME there as well. If you're more of a KDE fan, and I guess if I was to offer an alternative to Linux Mint as a community derivative of Linux Mint, then I'd recommend Ferran OS. Ferran OS is a great distribution built for sort of your average Linux user who might be migrating over from Windows. And while it uses Linux Mint as a base, it kind of provides the KDE goodness that Linux Mint has lacked since Linux Mint got rid of their KDE edition. So Ferran OS loosely follows the Linux Mint release cadence, although while its package base is a combination of Ubuntu LTS and Linux Mint releases, the developer behind Ferran OS does a great job of curating an experience that feels really coherent across multiple different toolkits. So whether you're running GNOME based apps or KDE based apps or flat packs or snaps or whatever it is, they all feel like they belong and it feels great. Um, Ferran OS has a bunch of great features. It's quite a, it's quite a hefty distribution. It has a lot packed into it, but if you're looking for a curated user experience based on Linux Mint, then give Ferran OS a go. 
If you are looking more at mainline Debian as a way to scratch your Linux itch, then perhaps MX Linux might be the best representation of a Debian based distribution that a lot of people are enjoying. Uh, this MX Linux has popped off in popularity over, uh, over the last five years or so. And uh, I can put that down to a few different things. First of all, for those who doubt this distribution's popularity and go, oh, the distro watch numbers are a bit over bloated. It's true, but also the most popular video on this channel is always competing with two videos. Why is Manjaro so popular and why is MX Linux so popular? The fact that those two videos keep duking it out for the most popular, most viewed video on this channel tells me something about this distro's user base. Now Debian as a project is mammoth and there are countless distributions based off Debian. I mean, Ubuntu itself, one could argue, is a community but not really based distribution off Debian. But MX Linux as a project gives users a fantastic alternative, especially those who feel burnt by the system D in its system. Uh, because of the fact it gives a great curated desktop experience built on top of rock solid stable Debian, and it gives multiple uh, desktop environments to choose from, XFCE, KDE, and Fluxbox. Uh, and it gives out of the box tools, custom tweaks, and all of that good stuff MX Linux is a prime contender if you're looking for a community built derivative of Debian. Also, if you're looking for a more KDE centric one that has been around for some time, Neptune OS is another one that I've really enjoyed in years past. Haven't checked it out recently, but they did drop an update back in August and they use a lot of the same fantastic tools like time shift and other little custom tools that make Neptune a really desktop friendly version of Debian. Moving on to Manjaro, Manjaro is itself a very user-friendly and accessible desktop experience. But because they offer so many desktops, it's kind of hard to see them specializing or offering a particularly curated experience to their end users. So if you are wanting a setup version of Manjaro that is a little more curated, has a little bit more visual polish and panache, and has some very thoughtful tweaks applied to it, then Tromjaro is probably where you should be looking. Uh, shout out to the developer that actually reached out to me uh, about this distribution because it was a complete blind spot for me and I have been trying it out and let me know if you want to see a full review of this in the coming weeks. But Tromjaro is basically a, uh, a spin of Manjaro, it's based on Manjaro and it offers a lot of the usability tweaks that a big uh, Ubuntu based distro like Zorin uh, would offer in terms of layout tweaks, in terms of really nice visual polish. It is XFCE based but the theming consistency across this desktop, whether you're running GTK, GNOME apps or Qt, KDE apps, uh, whether they come from Flatpak app image or the repositories uh, and even a more curated version of the AUR, uh, this distribution is very, very flexible and yet offers a fantastic curated experience out of the box. You don't really have to set up much at all. And the other thing that I really like about this project is that it has an emphasis on a trade free mentality in that you shouldn't have to trade your data or your money or whatever it is for use of a particular product or system. And so on that note, they do a few tweaks in the system, things like uh, ad blocking and tracker blocking and uh, making sure that the system is not harvesting any data about you and your use. And on that note, they also curate a list of applications through their website that create hot links to be able to install these apps on the system uh, while giving a more curated showroom floor, if you will, of some of the fantastic applications available in the open source world. So Tromjaro is a fascinating uh, project and I think it represents some of the best stuff that you can find in some of these community driven distros uh, while still enjoying all the compatibility and uh, user base of a distro like Manjaro. Now, if we were to go downstream from Manjaro, we would find ourselves with Arch. And I'm gonna give a recommendation that I gave in last week's video as well about Garuda Linux. Garuda Linux seems to just uh, have a lot of satisfied users behind it. And again, it's about being able to curate a, an experience for the end user where they can jump in and know that everything has been set up for them. And very similar to a lot of other the, of these distributions on this list, 
Uh, Garuda manages to rein in some of the chaos that new users can feel towards Arch Linux and gives them a lot of great graphical user interface tools to be able to manage it more succinctly. So whether it is hardware management, drivers, installing gaming features, using different kernels for different purposes, uh, Garuda has a lot of fantastic features and it supports a lot of desktops uh, for you to download. Now, if you're more of a Fedora guy and you like the simplicity and technological advancement that Fedora gives you, uh, then the Nobara project is one that you should check out. Now, shout out to Tech Hut for his recommendation of this one, because this one would have flown completely under my radar as well. But if you do love Fedora, but wish there was a more accessible, user-friendly, in initially set up version of Fedora that had a lot of the tweaks that a lot of people want to see and end up doing on their system anyway, all done for you, then Nobara is a great place to start. Just going through the list of tweaks that are made to the, the main workstation version of Fedora is pretty insane. And the person making these tweaks is pretty darn competent as he puts in a lot of work into the glorious egg roll version of Proton that a lot of gamers rely on. So that means a lot of the tweaks that this distribution makes out of the box and is available for you to use are geared towards gaming, streaming, running a lot of the apps that uh, YouTubers and gamers alike end up wanting to run. So NVIDIA drivers, check. RPM Fusion, check. Latest versions of OBS, Discord, Skype, Proton, etc. Check, 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 check. Go and watch Tech Hut's video if you wanna find more information about this project, uh, but I think it's worth a great shout out. Now, if you like RPMs, but not a huge fan of Red Hat as a distribution, then you could definitely check out OpenSUSE and while OpenSUSE is technically a community-driven distribution, it's still one of the main players with a major funding. So Gecko Linux is the community-driven derivative of OpenSUSE that has a curated OpenSUSE experience ready for the user, ready to roll. Very similar to the Nobara project, it takes a lot of the hassle out of running uh, the OpenSUSE desktop and having it set up the way that you like it. Not only does the Gecko Linux project offer a bunch of different desktops that you can install. It also supports both the static long-term support release of OpenSUSE or OpenSUSE Leap and OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. So if you want an up-to-date rolling distribution based on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed that is curated, ready to roll and runs your favorite desktop environment with great font smoothing, with all of the desktop components pre-installed, with codecs, NVIDIA drivers, all those goodies ready to roll, then this is the project for you. And there you have it. There's a lot of recommendations in this list and there's obviously more that I could handle as well. And that's where the, you, the community come in. Let me know in the description below and I'll try and uh, sort of give some feedback or a thumbs up or heart uh, ones that I've heard of, but just didn't include in this list. But I really have a soft spot for these community led, community driven distributions that build upon the giant contributors that their mainline desktops come from and improve it and give it all the tweaks that end users want to see. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all in the next one. Peace out.